Sibilance is a manner of articulation of fricative and affricate consonants, made by directing a stream of air with the tongue towards the sharp edge of the teeth, which are held close together. A consonant that uses sibilance may be called a sibilant, or a strident. Examples of sibilance are the consonants at the beginning of the English words sip, zip, ship, chip, and jump, and the second consonant in vision. The symbols in the International Phonetic Alphabet used to denote the sibilant sounds in these words are, respectively, S, Z, E florin, T, E florin, D, E. More specifically, the sounds, T, E florin, D, as in chip and jump, are affricates, whereas the rest are fricatives. Sibilants have a characteristically intense sound, which accounts for their non-linguistic use in getting one's attention. In the alveolar hissing sibilants, S, and, Z, the back of the tongue forms a narrow channel to focus the stream of air more intensely, resulting in a high pitch. With the hushing sibilants, such as English, E florin, T E florin, E, and, D, the tongue is flatter, and the resulting pitch lower. Because all sibilants are also stridents, the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. However, the terms do not mean the same thing. The English stridents are slash f, b, s, z, e florin, e, t e florin, to slash. The English sibilants are a more high-pitched subset of the stridents. The English sibilants are slash s, z, e florin, e, t e florin, to slash, and are stridents, but not sibilants, because they are lower in pitch. Stridency refers to the perceptual intensity of the sound of a sibilant consonant or obstacle fricatives affricates, which refers to the critical role of the teeth in producing the sound as an obstacle to the airstream. Non-sibilant fricatives and affricates produce their characteristic sound directly with the tongue or lips etc. and the place of contact in the mouth, without secondary involvement of the teeth. The characteristic intensity of sibilants means that small variations in tongue shape and position are perceivable with the result that there are a large number of sibilant types that contrast in various languages. Acoustics, sibilants are louder than their non-sibilant counterparts, and most of their acoustic energy occurs at higher frequencies than non-sibilant fricatives. S, has the most acoustic strength at around 8000 Hz, but can reach as high as 10,000 Hz. E florin has the bulk of its acoustic energy at around 4000 Hz but can extend up to around 8,000 Hz. Sibilant types, all sibilants are coronal consonants. However, there is a great deal of variety among sibilants as to tongue shape, point of contact on the tongue, and point of contact on the upper side of the mouth. The following variables affect sibilant sound quality, and, along with their possible values, are ordered from sharpest to dullest, tongue shape, grooved, alveolopalatal, palato alveola, retroflex, place of articulation, dental or denti alveola, alveola, post alveola, palatal, point of contact on the tongue, laminal closed, laminal non-closed, apical, subapical, generally, the values of the different variables co-occur so as to produce an overall sharper or duller sound. For example, a laminal denti alveola grooved sibilant occurs in polish and a subapical palatal retroflex sibilant occurs in toda. Equals tongue shape equals, the main distinction is the shape of the tongue. Most sibilants have a groove running down the center line of the tongue that helps focus the airstream, but it's not known how widespread this is. In addition, the following tongue shapes are described, from sharpest and highest pitched to dullest and lowest pitched, Hollow This hollow accepts a large volume of air that is forced through a typically narrow aperture that directs a high-velocity jet of air against the teeth, which results in a high-pitched, piercing hissing sound. Because of the prominence of these sounds, they are the most common and most stable of sibilants cross-linguistically. They occur in English, where they are denoted with a letter S or Z, as in soon or zone. Alveolopalatal, with a convex, V-shaped tongue and highly palatalized. Palato alveola, with a dome tongue. These sounds occur in English, where they are denoted with letter combinations such as sh, ch, g, j or c, as in shin, chin, jin and vision. Retroflex, with a flat or concave tongue, and no palatalization. 
These sounds occur in a large number of varieties, some of which also go by other names. The subapical palatal or true retroflex sounds are the very dullest and lowest pitched of all the sibilants. The latter three postalveolar types of sounds are often known as hushing sounds because of their quality, as opposed to the hissing alveolar sounds. The alveolar sounds in fact occur in several varieties, in addition to the normal sound of English s, palatalized sibilants can occur with or without raising the tongue body to the palate. Palatalized alveolars are transcribed for example, say squared and occur in Russian. They sound similar to the cluster, sj occurring in the middle of the English phrase miss you. Lisping, alveolar sibilants made with the tip of the tongue near the upper teeth have a softer sound reminiscent of the lisping, i, sound of English think. These sounds are relatively uncommon, but occur in some of the indigenous languages of California as well as in the Spanish dialects of eastern Andalusia, in cities such as Granada, Huelva, Cordoba, Jaw Copyright N and Almeria. In these dialects, the lisping sibilant, C is the normal pronunciation of the letters S and Z, as well as C before I or E, replacing the S or I that occurs elsewhere in Andalusia. Speaking non-technically, the retroflex consonant, E sounds somewhat like a mixture between the regular English, E florin of ship, and a strong American R. While the alveolopalatal consonant, E, sounds somewhat like a mixture of English, E florin of ship, and the SJ in the middle of miss you. Equals place of articulation equals, sibilants can be made at any coronal articulation, that is the tongue can contact the upper side of the mouth anywhere from the upper teeth to the hard palate, with the in-between articulations being denti alveola, alveola and post alveola. Equals point of contact on the tongue equals, the tongue can contact the upper side of the mouth with the very tip of the tongue. With the surface just behind the tip, called the blade of the tongue. Or with the underside of the tip. Apical and subapical articulations are always tongue up, with the tip of the tongue above the teeth, while laminal articulations can be either tongue up or tongue down, with the tip of the tongue behind the lower teeth. This distinction is particularly important for retroflex sibilants, because all three varieties can occur, with noticeably different sound qualities. For more information on these variants and their relation to sibilants, see the article on postalveolar consonants. For tongue down laminal articulations, an additional distinction can be made depending on where exactly behind the lower teeth the tongue tip is placed. A little ways back from the lower teeth is a hollow area in the lower surface of the mouth. When the tongue tip rests in this hollow area, there is an empty space below the tongue, which results in a relatively duller sound. When the tip of the tongue rests against the lower teeth, there is no sublingual cavity, resulting in a sharper sound. Usually, the position of the tip of the tongue correlates with the grooved versus hushing tongue shape so as to maximize the differences. However, the palato-alveolar sibilants in the northwest Caucasian languages such as Ibuic are an exception. These sounds have the tongue tip resting directly against the lower teeth, which gives the sounds a quality that Catford describes as hissing hushing. Ladeforged and Madison term this a closed laminal postalveolar articulation, and transcribe them as angstrom, A, although this is not an IPA notation. See the article on postalveolar consonants for more information. Symbols in the IPA, the following table shows the types of sibilant fricatives defined in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Diacritics can be used for finer detail. For example, Apical and laminal alveolars can be specified as C versus C. A dental sibilant as C. A palatalized alveolar as C squared. And a generic retracted sibilant as C, a transcription frequently used for the sharper quality types of retroflex consonants. There is no diacritic to denote the laminal closed articulation of palato alveolars in the Northwest Caucasian languages but they're sometimes provisionally transcribed as angstrom A. Possible combinations, the attested possibilities, with exemplar languages, are as follows. Note that the IPA diacritics are simplified. Some articulations would require two diacritics to be fully specified, but only one is used in order to keep the results legible without the need for open-type IPA fonts. 
Also, Ladeforge has resurrected an obsolete IPA symbol, the under dot, to indicate apical post alveola, and that notation is used here. On these sounds are usually just transcribed IEI copyright. Apical post alveola and subapical palatal sibilants do not contrast in any language, but if necessary, apical post alveolas can be transcribed with an apical diacritic, as ICI's III copyright or IIEII copyright. Ladeforged resurrects the old retroflex subdot for apical retroflexes, IU to the first pound I copyright also seen in the literature on for example Hindi and Norwegian as IU paragraph a paragraph she copyright a euro the domed articulation of, E florin E precludes a subapical realization. Equals whistled sibilance equals, whistled sibilance occur in speech pathology and may be caused by dental prostheses or orthodontics. However, they also occur phonemically in several southern Bantu languages, the best known being Shona. These have been variously described Ada Euro as labialized but not velarized, as retroflex, etc., but none of these articulations are required for the sounds. Using the extended IPA, Shona SV and ZV may be transcribed ICI copyright and ISII copyright. Other transcriptions seen include purely labialized ICY copyright and ISIY copyright and labially co-articulated ISAR paragraph squared I copyright and ISAR micron I copyright or IC degree Celsius I copyright and ISIO I squared I copyright. In the otherwise IPA transcription of Shona and Oak, the whistled sibilants are transcribed with non-IPA IE Euro I copyright and ITE de Euro I copyright. Linguistic contrasts among sibilants, not including differences in manner of articulation or secondary articulation, some languages have as many as four different types of sibilants. For example, Northern Kayang and Southern Kayang have a four-way distinction among sibilant affricates, with one for each of the four tongue shapes. Toda also has a four-way sibilant distinction, with one alveola, one palato alveola, and two retroflex. The now extinct Uwic language is particularly complex, with a total of 27 sibilant consonants. Not only are all four tongue shapes represented, but both the palato alveolas and alveolopalatals can additionally appear labialized. On top of that, there is a five way manner distinction among voiceless and voiced fricatives, voiceless and voiced affricates, and ejective affricates. The BZYP dialect of the related Abkhaz language also has a similar inventory. Some languages have four types when palatalization is considered. Polish is one example, with both palatalized and non palatalized laminal denti alveolas, laminal post alveola, and alveolopalatal. Russian has the same surface contrasts, but the alveolopalatals are arguably not phonemic. They only occur geminate whereas the retroflex consonants never occur geminate, suggesting that both are allophones of the same phoneme. Somewhat more common are languages with three sibilant types, including one hissing and two hushing. As with Polish and Russian, the two hushing types are usually post-alveolar and alveolopalatal, since these are the two most distinct from each other. Mandarin Chinese is an example of such a language. However, other possibilities exist. Serbo-Croatian has alveola, palato alveola and alveolopalatal affricates, whereas Basque has palato alveola and laminal and apical alveola fricatives and affricates. Extremely common are languages, such as English, with two sibilant types, one hissing and one hushing. A wide variety of languages across the world have this pattern. Perhaps most common is the pattern, as in English, with alveola and palato alveola sibilants. Modern Northern Peninsula Spanish has a single apico alveolar sibilant fricative, C, as well as a single palato alveolar sibilant affricate, TE florin. However, there are also languages with alveolar and apical retroflex sibilants, and with alveolar and alveolopalatal post alveolars. Few languages with sibilants are missing the hissing type, but they do exist. Middle Vietnamese is normally reconstructed with two sibilant fricatives both hushing. Some languages have only a single hushing sibilant and no hissing sibilant, such as southern peninsula Spanish dialects of the Cixio type which have replaced the former hissing fricative with i, leaving only te florin. 
languages with no sibilants are fairly rare. Most have no fricatives at all, or no fricatives apart from. Examples include most Australian languages, Hawaiian and Rotokas, and what is generally reconstructed for Proto-Bantu. Languages with fricatives but no sibilants do however occur. One is Erku of Nigeria, which is only the fricative slash f, v, h slash. Contested definitions, authors including Chomsky and Halle group, f, and, v, as sibilants. However, they do not have the grooved articulation and high frequencies of other sibilants, and most phoneticians continue to group them together with bilabial, e, i squared and dental, i, a degree as non sibilant anterior fricatives. For a grouping of sibilants and, f, v, the term strident is more common. Some researchers judge, f, to be non strident in English, based on measurements of its comparative amplitude, but to be strident in other languages. The nature of sibilants as so called obstacle fricatives is complicated. A euro there is a continuum of possibilities relating to the angle at which the jet of air may strike an obstacle. The grooving often considered necessary for classification as a sibilant has been observed in ultrasound studies of the tongue for the supposedly non sibilant voiceless alveolar fricative, I, of English. See also, de essing, plosive consonant, sj sound, strident vowel, voiceless alveolar retracted sibilant, voiced apical viola fricative. Notes References Bright, William Sibilance and Naturalness in Aboriginal California, Journal of California Anthropology, Papers in Linguistics 1, 39 Euro 63, Dalba, John B., Observations on Present-day CO and Cicio in Southern Spain, Hispanio 63, 5 Euro 19, doi, 10.2307-340806, Dalba, John B., 340806 Holder. Joza Copyright Ignacio, Basque Phonology, London, Routledge, JSTOR 340806, Laidforged, Peter. Madison, Ian. The Sounds of the World's Languages. Oxford, Blackwell. ISBN 0-631-19814-8. Obeyed, Antonio H., The Vagaries of the Spanish S. Hispania 56, 60 Euro 67, doi, 10.2307 slash 339038, JSTOR 339038, Shosted, Ryan K. Just put your lips together and blow. The Whistled Fricatives of Southern Bantu.